This lecture covers pole placement design for single input, single output feedback systems. Thus far, we've designed simple controllers for simple plants, starting with a constant gain plant, which we controlled by an integral controller. That was what we called case two in the early part of the course. Before that, we considered a first order plant and we controlled that with a proportional controller. Also, we learned how to control that with a proportional integral controller when we moved on to higher order closed loop systems. Then we considered a second order plant and we controlled that with a proportional derivative controller. And then we're able to add also an integral term yielding a PID controller. We also considered some more general results for state feedback control architectures once we knew uh, the matrix exponential and how to analyze high order systems. So as I mentioned, we know how to analyze the stability and frequency response of high order systems, but we had done limited design, mostly based on state feedback control architectures. So here we cover a design approach for high order plants that is not based on state feedback and in, instead uses only feedback of the regulated variable y much like this diagram shows here where y is the only variable being fed back. I've notated the disturbance with the letter f in this case appearing between the controller and the plant instead of the usual d. We're going to be using a lot of numerator and denominators and transfer functions and d will be the symbol for the denominator with the transfer function. So instead of using D for a disturbance, I've used F for a disturbance. Okay, let's move on to the notation. So we're going to use polynomials extensively throughout this. Let's clarify some notation. The degree of a polynomial is the order of the highest appearing power in the monomials that make up the polynomial. So here, for this polynomial P, the degree is 5, since that is the highest appearing power in that first listed term, 2s to the fifth. The degree is notated with the partial symbol, so above we would say the degree of P, partial P, is 5. A polynomial is monic if the coefficient associated with the highest power is equal to 1. We've mentioned monic polynomials before. The polynomial P is not monic because the highest power of S is S to the fifth, and the coefficient associated with that is a 2. But on the other hand, this polynomial Q, which leads with an S to the cubed, is monic. For transfer functions, we always assume that the denominator is monic, simply by dividing the numerator and denominator by whatever appropriate factor would make the denominator a monic polynomial. Now there's another concept we want to cover is proper and strictly properness of transfer functions. So a transfer function, remember, is just a rational function, a numerator polynomial and a denominator polynomial. And it's called proper if the degree of the numerator is less than or equal to the degree of the denominator. And it's called strictly proper if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. For most control problems, we're always going to assume that the plant is strictly proper and the controller is proper. Now if you go back to the linear differential operators that lead to the transfer function, you can convince yourself that strictly proper systems have no direct feed through. The output is smoother than the input. But for proper systems that aren't strictly proper, there is direct feed through. These properness assumptions, along with the monic denominators, imply that for some plant controller transfer function pair, this particular polynomial, dp, dc, plus np, nc, the degree of that is simply equal to the degree of dp, dc, because the degree of np is less than the degree of dp. Also, the degree of the product of two polynomials is clearly the sum of their degrees, so that last equality also holds. The other thing is that this polynomial is monic. Again, the dp, dc term gives the highest order term, and since both denominators are monic, that is itself a monic polynomial. Okay, now let's get on to the pole placement problem. So we'll consider the single loop feedback architecture as I drew earlier with transfer functions for the controller and the plant denoted as C and P with their associated numerator and denominator polynomials.
In terms of linear differential operators, the closed loop differential equation for this particular diagram is given below. You should be able to derive that. Of course, the characteristic polynomial is the polynomial associated with the homogeneous equation. So if we were to set r and f, the inputs, to 0, we would be left with the homogeneous equation for y, and that would give us the characteristic polynomial involving the denominator of the plant, the denominator of the controller, as well as the numerator of the plant and the numerator of the controller. That is our closed-loop characteristic polynomial. Remember, the roots are called the closed-loop poles. For the pole placement problem, we have a desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial specified, and our goal is to pick the controller such that the actual closed-loop characteristic polynomial is the desired polynomial. Let me put that problem in a box and read it carefully. So given a desired monic closed-loop characteristic polynomial lambda desired, as well as the plant transfer function NP over DP, let's determine if they exist polynomials NC, DC, such that the desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial is the actual closed-loop characteristic polynomial, as well as that the controller is proper, so that the degree of the numerator is less than or equal to the degree of the denominator. And our goal of these slides is to understand how to do that and when it, when it is possible. So this is called pole placement for obvious reasons. Again, we're given a plant in either its ODE or equivalent transfer function form, as well as a desired closed-loop characteristic equation, which would mean the desired roots of the closed-loop characteristic equation or the desired closed-loop pole locations. And we convert that to a closed-loop characteristic equation. There's the closed-loop diagram. And we know that the closed-loop characteristic equation involves the individual numerators and denominators of the plant and the controller. Our goal is to determine a controller that's proper so that the closed-loop system has the desired pole locations. Now this serves as a possible design strategy. We could use this to design stable closed-loop systems given a plant. It also is a good first-level theory to derive, understand, and use in some examples. So the first question is, is this always possible? Well, let's consider an example. Here I have a plant that's second order and I've listed a desired closed-loop characteristic equation that also happens to be second order with poles at negative 3 and negative 5. Since the plant is second order and the desired characteristic polynomial is also second order, it's clear from examining the closed-loop characteristic polynomial over here that my controller needs to be a constant gain. Otherwise, my closed-loop characteristic polynomial will even be higher order. So the controller must just be a gain, which gives us, as a closed-loop characteristic equation, the denominator of the plant times the denominator of the controller, which is 1, plus the numerator of the plant times the numerator of the controller, which is beta. If we multiply that out, we see that that expression looks like this, and it's clear that for no value of beta is it ever equal to the desired closed-loop characteristic equation. So in this case, it was not possible. For this second-order plant, we cannot specify that second-order closed-loop characteristic equation and find a controller which achieved that. So it's clearly not always possible. But it turns out with some degree requirements on the controller polynomials, n sub c, d sub c, as well as the desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial, then it will be. Let's see how this works. Let's count the unknowns and the constraints. So the plant transfer function is a strictly proper transfer function of degree n. The denominator you see is a monic polynomial of degree n, and the numerator is a polynomial of degree n minus 1, or possibly smaller, depending on the, if some of the alphas are 0. A general mth order controller would have a transfer function that looks like this. Again, I've made the denominator monic, like we said we always could. And then I just have coefficients in the denominator, notated by b's, and in the numerator, notated by a's. And the controller is allowed to be proper and not strictly proper. So its numerator could be mth order as well. 
There's the closed loop system and the closed loop characteristic polynomial. Now let's count the important items. The number of free parameters that I've listed are the controller parameters and there are m plus 1 coefficients in the a and m coefficients in the b giving us 2m plus 1 coefficients. The closed loop characteristic polynomial on the other hand is of degree n plus m and consequently it has n plus m roots. Right? Why is it degree n plus m? Because the two denominators when they multiply together they create a monic polynomial of degree n plus m. The numerators multiplied together are lower than that degree and therefore the overall closed loop characteristic polynomial is of degree n plus m. Now for pole placement we're trying to use these two m plus one parameters to independently affect the n plus m roots. It's certainly plausible that this will work when the number of free parameters equals the number of quantities that we're trying to affect. So that would give us 2m plus 1 equaling n plus m. Now if we cancel the m on both sides, it tells us that m should be equal to n minus 1. So we would guess that we should use a general controller of degree 1 less than the plant. That's the m equals n minus 1. Remember the degree of the controller was degree m and the degree of the plant was degree n. So we use a controller of degree 1 less than the plant and therefore that means that the total closed loop degree is actually 2n minus 1 and the lambda desired that we pick should reflect this. Okay, so now let's understand if this intuition is actually true. For that we need some theorems about polynomials. The main theorem that we're going to use is that if we have two polynomials, n and d, and the degree of n is less than the degree of d, which I've notated the degree of n equals k, and the degree of d equals little n, uh, let's first assume that n and d have no common roots. That means they're called coprime. Then, for any polynomial lambda, whose degree is 2n minus 1, we can always find polynomials a and b such that d times b plus n times a equals lambda and the degree of a is less than or equal to the degree of b which happens to be equal to n minus 1. This looks like a pretty useful theorem since this is very similar to the types of things we need when we're trying to find the controller numerator and denominator. So I'm not going to prove this theorem. I'm going to talk about how you would actually solve it numerically. So in practice what you simply do is you're given the n and d polynomials above where n has degree less than the degree of d and the degree of capital D is little n and then you simply let a and b be arbitrary polynomials. b is monic of degree n minus 1 and a is up to degree n minus 1 with coefficients including the leading term. Those coefficients are thought of just as free variables, parameters that we need to decide. And then you form the expression d times b plus n times a. That obviously gives you a polynomial that is of degree 2n minus 1 because of the degree of d and the degree of b and its coefficients are functions of the parameters a and b. You simply equate those to the coefficients associated with the given polynomial lambda and this will always result in a square invertible system of linear equations. There are 2n minus 1 equations and 2n minus 1 parameters. So you then solve that to yield the coefficients associated with the A and B polynomials. Now let's apply this to the pole placement problem. Here is our plant, an nth order plant, numerator over denominator expressed in transfer function form. It is strictly proper. Notice the numerator degree is n minus 1 at most and the denominator degree is definitely n. And 
uh, we're going to assume it satisfies the assumption that we need, namely that the numerator and denominator have no common roots. They're co-prime. We'll talk more about what it means to have common roots later when we talk about system approximations. But for now, we're just assuming they have no common roots. We also have a desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial that has degree 2n minus 1. So whatever the plant degree is, the closed-loop desired characteristic polynomial is 2n minus 1. And there it is expressed as a degree 2n minus 1 monic polynomial. Here I've written it out with the roots factored. So those lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way to lambda 2n minus 1 are the desired closed-loop poles. There's our feedback diagram that we're considering. Remember what the closed-loop characteristic equation is. Now what we know we're supposed to do is consider a controller whose degree is one less than the plant. So there is an arbitrary controller. The denominator is of order n minus 1. It's monic. The numerator is of also of order n minus 1. The controller may be proper. So the coefficients a0 through a n minus 1 uh, determine the numerator and the coefficients b1 through bn minus 1 determine the denominator. Notice that I've written the controller polynomial and denominator polynomial. They're functions of s, but one is parametrized by the parameters a and the other is parametrized by the parameters b. But we're thinking of these as polynomials in s with parameter dependence on a or b. This gives us the closed loop characteristic equation there I've written it again. It's a polynomial in S, but it has parameters A and B in it, and it consists of DP times DC. DC is where the B dependence comes from, and NP times NC, and NC is where the A dependence comes from. What we know we're supposed to do is equate this parametrized polynomial to the known desired polynomial, term by term, and we can solve for the 2n minus 1 parameters that make up the controller parameters. We know that we'll always have a unique solution based on the previous theorem. And that is the solution to the pole placement problem. So now let's revisit the original example with this theorem in mind. We'll use the same plant 2s plus 1 over s squared minus s plus 4. That's an unstable system. But now we know that rather than using a constant controller, we have to use a first order controller since the plant is second order, right? The theorem we just learned said that for a second order plant with the pole placement problem as our goal, we should use a general first order controller. There I've written a general first order controller with a monic denominator. It has three parameters, A0, A1, and B1. The resulting closed loop characteristic polynomial is right there. I've simply taken the denominator of the plant times the denominator of the controller plus the numerator of the plant times the numerator of the controller. It's a polynomial in S, but it's parametrized by A and B. If we multiply that out and collect terms, there it is expressed as a polynomial in S with each of the coefficients linear functions of the A's and B's. Let's pick now a third order desired closed loop characteristic polynomial. Or you can think of it as three roots and then we form the correct polynomial. And that's how I'm doing it here. I'll use a second order polynomial with a xi omega n parameterization and then a first order polynomial with omega n and then a parameter alpha that simply scales that. So here I'm using three parameters, xi, omega n, and alpha to describe these desired closed loop pole locations. Now let's multiply this out and express it as a cubic polynomial. And now we can match up the terms. This is the desired polynomial. And up above, we have what the actual polynomial is as a function of the controller parameters. When we match coefficients, we'll get three equations and three unknowns. And in fact, they just form a matrix expression that looks like this. Let's look at the first row of this matrix expression. We see we have 2 times a naught which is coming from there, plus b1, which is coming from there, minus 1 should equal 2 xi plus alpha times omega n coming from there. Check that the other two rows correspond to the second and third coefficients. We can solve this now for a0, a1, and b1, and we will have achieved 
the pole placement objective with this designed controller. So the use of this theorem is fairly straightforward. Again, for the pole placement objective, always choose an arbitrary controller of degree one less than the degree of the plant. But what if we'd like to also include integral action in our controller in order to get those nice, robust, steady state gain properties? Well, here's the next theorem that shows how to do that. I'm not going to prove it, but it involves the same type of polynomial results. So we start with an nth order plant that is strictly proper, as before. We make the same assumption that the numerator and denominator polynomials have no common roots, they're co-prime. But we also have to make an additional assumption that zero is not a root of the numerator. That would cause a problem with the integral control, and we'll try to understand that again later in class. So let's assume that those two assumptions are satisfied. We also now pick a desired closed-loop characteristic polynomial, not of degree 2n minus 1 as in the previous case, but of degree 2n. And of course, we again want the roots to have negative real parts. We want this to represent a stable system. So there is a desired degree 2n characteristic polynomial. Here's again the closed-loop system with the closed-loop characteristic polynomial illustrated in terms of the plant and controller polynomials. Here's the recipe. Use a controller of the following form. Notice it's an nth order controller, not n minus 1th order, but it has an integral built into it. Notice the s term in the denominator. That represents an integration. Regardless of what the coefficients for b1 through bn minus 1 are, the controller will have an integrator in it. And then the numerator coefficients, of course, are represented by the a's. As I mentioned, integral action is built in regardless of the coefficient choices. Now, simply do the procedure on the previous page, form the closed loop characteristic equation, which involves the parameters a and b, match that term by term to the desired closed loop characteristic polynomial, and it will represent a square system with two n variables, and there will always be a unique solution for the coefficients of c. So this is how we achieve pole placement with integral action in the controller. Now what does the integral action buy us? Remember that the closed loop transfer function from r to y is as shown, and the closed loop transfer function from f to y is as shown. We're interested in making the steady state gains of these respectively 1 and 0. Notice that the denominator of the controller, d sub c, is always 0 at s equals 0, regardless of the choices of the b's. It's 0 because of that leading s term. So therefore, we know that the steady state gain is the transfer function evaluated at s equals 0. In the case of r to y, the dc term at s equals 0 is 0, indicating that we will end up with the fraction NPNC at 0 over NPNC at 0, which is always 1. That checks out. For the transfer function from F to Y, again, the steady state gain is the transfer function evaluated at S equals 0. And in this case, the numerator DC is 0 at S equals 0. So we end up with 0 over NPNC, which again, confirms to be zero. So we get these nice, robust, steady state gains by inclusion of the controller, and we can do pole placement along the way. This appears to be a very useful theorem. Let's see how it compares with some results we learned a long time ago. Remember that in section 14.3, we learned that PI control works well for a first order plant. Well, that's just, in fact, a special case of the previous slide, pole placement with a control integrator. Suppose the plant is an arbitrary first-order plant. Here I have alpha 1 over s plus gamma 1. According to the result on the previous slide, if we want to do pole placement with a controller integrator, the controller should be first order, the same order as the plant, but include integral action. Hence, it has to be of this form there's a first order system including integral action. 
Now, in the earlier work, we called that a proportional and integral controller. Instead of A0 and A1, we called them KP and KI. The closed loop characteristic equation, as we've put up many times, looks like this. And we form the closed loop characteristic polynomial just using the numerator and denominator of these two expressions. And we end up with this quadratic equation in S whose coefficients depend linearly on the coefficients A0 and A1. Remember, gamma1 and alpha1 are fixed numbers, properties of the plant. If we wanted to do pole placement, we might have a desired second loop, closed loop characteristic polynomial using, say, the xi omega n parameterization. And then we would simply equate these two and solve for the coefficients of A. The equating gives those two expressions, which can easily be solved to yield A0 and A1. And we would call these the design equations. We get the coefficients of the controller in terms of plant parameters, gamma 1 and alpha 1, and closed loop pole locations parameterized by xi and omega n. This again is nothing new. We knew how to do this before. So now let's do a slightly more complicated example, but still quite simple. Let's take the plant to be second order. Here I just have a double integrator. This would be a uh, standard for a positioning problem where the input is a force and the output is the position of a point mass. If we want to do pole placement with an integral action in the controller, we know we should pick a second order controller that already has an integrator built into it. So the controller should look like this. Notice it's second order, look at the denominator polynomial, but it leads with an integrator. The numerator should be arbitrary, and the overall controller should be proper, but not strictly proper. This yields a closed loop characteristic polynomial of fourth order, right? Second order plant and a second order controller. If we simply multiply those out, we get this expression. Notice that I've written it as a polynomial in S parameterized by the F and C parameters, which make up the controller, which are still to be designed. In this case, it's quite simple because the plant was so simple. So the F entries and the C entries enter very nicely. Now, let's imagine we have a desired closed loop characteristic polynomial, also fourth order. For example, I could use the xi omega n parameterization, as well as another pole at negative omega n and another pole at negative alpha omega n. So here we're using three parameters, alpha, xi, and omega n, to parameterize these four locations. This is just for example. Any desired fourth order characteristic polynomial would be acceptable. If we multiply that out, we get kind of a messy expression, but nevertheless we can do that. And now we can simply equate the coefficients of the desired polynomial to the actual parametrized closed loop polynomial. When we do that equating, we get the design equations for the parameters F1, C0, C1, and C2. In this case, it's not really a system of four equations and four unknowns because the F and C0, C1, and C2 enter the closed loop characteristic polynomials so simply. So we can just read off the coefficients of the controller. So that concludes a simple example for pole placement with a controller integrator that is beyond what we already knew how to do. Okay, so now let's summarize what we've covered in this lecture. We had two results called number one and number two. In both cases, the designer gets to specify the closed loop pole locations. This would be done thinking of time constants and damping, uh, as we've talked about before. At that point, math takes over and solves for the controller coefficients. The designer is allowed to now focus on closed loop quantities, these time constants and damping ratios, which are more meaningful than the controller coefficients by themselves. It's easy to enforce that the resulting controller must have integral action if desired. We saw that that just changes the order of the desired characteristic polynomial. And overall, this is very similar to our eigenvalue placement via state feedback results. But this lecture handles the case when only the regulated variable is being fed back as shown in the picture above, where y is being fed back, and there's no state feedback. The main drawbacks, uh, apart from stability and damping, it's just not really clear where the closed loop poles should be. We talked about that in the eigenvalue placement as well. How fast should they be? 
If there are many of them, where should they all be relative to one another? The other thing is the, the effect of closed loop pole locations on other properties beyond time constants and dampings is unclear. For example, what is the frequency response from sensor noise to the control input? What exactly does the step response from R to Y look like? And any other characterizations of good closed loop performance. Also, although we haven't learned about robustness margins for high order systems, we don't know how the pole location choices affect our gain margin and our time delay margin. And of course, we'd like to make sure that those are adequate as well. So, pole placement is a good control design procedure to learn. It's very simple to understand how it works, and it's very simple to implement. It's pretty useful on low order problems. Uh, there are more sophisticated techniques that are beyond the scope of this course that go beyond pole placement. But for now, that is a successful design method that you know that will work for both low and high order systems. Thanks for listening.